Hey guys, uh, Ego here again. Last time we talked about how we can use matrices to represent rotation matrices and actually what their inverse is. And a little disclaimer, the way I calculated the inverse in the previous video was a manual method that really only works for humans. It's not so great with computers. So for the purpose of this video and any other future videos, I'm always going to recommend that you just use a module. Uh, now, luckily, there's a great module. I've linked it in the description, and it's the one that I'm going to be using in this video. So anytime I talk about calculating an inverse or something like that, just use the module. There's no point in me teaching you linear algebra stuff because it's kind of out of the scope of this video, and I want to teach you how you can use it. I don't want to actually teach you how to do it. So anyway... What we're talking about today is systems of equations, and what we're going to be answering is the age-old problem that you've probably encountered at some point in your game development career, quote-unquote career. Um, <laughs> if you ever have made a game or something where you want to throw something at an arc, right? You're standing here, you're being your little person, and you want to throw something. That's a terrible person. You want to throw something like a ball or, you know, something that has gravity and you want it to land in a specific spot, you've probably had difficulty calculating exactly the arc that this object should travel. And that's what we're going to be answering today. We're going to be figuring out how we can calculate those arcs that we want our object to travel. And there's a few pieces of information that we're, we're going to want. For one, we're going to want the uh, starting time. Now, obviously, the starting time in pretty much every case is going to be zero, but we can assume that, you know, this systems of equation thing, this is a broad concept. It doesn't just apply to calculating the arc of a path of something you're throwing. As you'll hopefully learn by the end of this, you can use this to calculate many different types of functions, which is really what I want you to take away from this video. Uh, but in this case, we, we know that we're starting at some time zero, so time zero. And we also know that in terms of y, so f of t, we're also at zero. And then we know, let's say this is one. We know that at, at uh, once again, y, at once one second has passed at y, so f of t, we're also once again at zero. So we have two, two functions or two values in our, that fit this function already that we guarantee to know our value. And you, I would assume that if you're... Uh, you have a starting position and you have an ending position, right? So you know uh, where you want to be at t equals 1 and so forth. And that's the same kind of idea here, right? So we've got at t of 0, we have a value of 0. And at t of 1, we also have a z value of 0. And what we're trying to do here is we're actually trying to find a, b, and c for this equation. Now the thing is, is, is we can do this, we, we can only really do this if we have as many values that we're 100% sure of at any given t, um, as long as we have as many missing variables as there are. So we have two, but we're, we need three because there's a, b, and c in this, right? We, we only have two here. So the thing that we're going to add to this to get our third value is we're going to say f prime of t, which is the derivative, and actually, I'll write this up here, f prime of t, which is the derivative. Now, I'm not going to talk to you about how we actually take this value, or where I'm pulling this from, because that's out of the scope of this video, and I'm going to add this in here. Normally, I wouldn't write this, and you wouldn't write this, this is calculus, but you wouldn't write 0 times c, but I'm going to add it to you, because I'm assuming, or add it to the equation, because I'm assuming most of the people watching this are not familiar with calculus. I'm sure some of you are but I'm going to assume most of you are not. So what this equation is, what f prime is, is that at any given point on this curve, f prime is going to give us the slope. And you might be going, what? Well, it's a curved slope. Well, what the slope is on a curve is if you imagine two infinitely small points close together and you were to draw a line between them, the slope is the slope of that line at that point. So that's what this equation is, and I'm not going to talk about how we actually calculate that and what it is. You're just going to have to take my word for it, and you're going to have to uh, use this equation yourself. But what that's what it gives you, and you can test it yourself if you want, because uh, this will work on any equation that fits this form, uh, a, a, plus t, or a times t squared plus bt plus c. Uh, this will work as long as you fill in the a, b, and you obviously don't have to include the c because it's 0 times c, but I'm writing it there, as I said earlier, for... Um, simplicity's sake and clarity but what we can use this for because it still uses the same a b and c as this equation right is we can set the slope at any given point so we can say at f1 the slope 
is negative 5. So we can say here for our given equation the slope is going to be negative 5. And with that we now have a system of equations. So we can plug that in. We can say a times 0 squared, which is still 0, plus b times 0 plus c is equal to 0, right? So all we're just saying is this. We're just writing this out more fully. And then we can say uh, a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c is equal to 0 again. And then we take the derivative here, which is 2a, and we're plugging in t there, plus b uh, plus 0 times c is equal to negative 5. And we can use these three equations, and we're going to do this by hand first, uh, to solve for a, b, and c. And so to do that, let's start off. Let's see. Okay, so we know uh, 0 times a, so that those cancel out. So we're left with c equals 0. That's a pretty easy one. Okay, and so we can plug the c equals 0 into there. So that leaves us with a plus b equals 0. Okay, so that's not very helpful. It doesn't help us solve anything. So for the time being, let's say a is equal to negative b. Okay, let's go into here. That's 2 times a plus b is equal to negative 5. We just got rid of the 0 times c. Okay, that's an also not very helpful. We have this from before, so let's plug that in. So let's say negative 2b plus b equals negative 5. Well, that just becomes negative b equals negative 5. So b then becomes 5, sorry, becomes 5. And then we can plug this back in here, right? We know a already is equal to negative b, so a then is equal to, sure enough, negative 5. So there we go, we have our three values, a equals negative 5, b equals 5, and c equals 0. And that's great and all, but we had to solve it by hand, so that's not very useful. We want a way that computers can solve it. And it turns out that there is a way computers can solve it, and it's matrices. Uh, so as we learned in the last video, the way that matrices multiply, if we take a, I don't know, what's a good value to use? The way that matrices uh, work is I'm just going to say 1, let's say 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6. These values don't really matter. I'm just trying to give you an example. 7, 8, and 9. And if we multiply them by some other values, let's say a, b, and c, right? all we're going to get for the first row, so what that's equal to for the first row is 1 times a plus 2 times b plus 3 times c and that's our first row and then it becomes 4 times a times a plus 5 times b plus 6 times c and then 7 times a plus 8 times b plus 9 times c right and we'd add of course if we had a b and c we'd add these all together and we'd be left with three numbers each in their own uh, horizontal row and so what we can actually do is we can write this these same this same system of equations out in matrix form right we can take the coefficients uh, so we can take to use the same example that we had before we can take we can say uh, for our first one it's 0 0 and 1 times C and then 1 times 1 times 1 uh, or more specifically these are 0 squared and 1 squared um, but I mean those of course end up being zero and then we can be left with two so that's two because two times one so we'll just write that in there uh, one and zero and if we would get that those that same system of equations if we multiply that by a b and c right because zero times zero squared times a that's this part here uh, zero times b that's this part here plus one times c which is this part here and of course that fits those three other things um, and we can say that that is, of course, equal to those values because we know right here when they all add up, theoretically, when a, if we knew a, b, and c, they would add up to zero. So we know zero, zero, and negative five here. So that's just a different form of writing it. And it's not very special. We haven't said anything genius right now. But what is interesting about this is that the inverse is essentially a way to kind of multiply divide it's like division via multiplication and I know that sounds weird but if you let's think about it from the standpoint of a number we have 5 times x equals 10 but we know the common way that you're used to solving this would be to just divide both sides by 5 but what if we to multiply both sides by the inverse so that becomes 5x times 5 to the power of negative 1 times 10 to the power of 
uh, times, sorry, 5 to the power of negative 1. Right, because as long as we do the same thing on both sides, we're not changing anything realistically. Uh, so what does that become? That becomes 5 times x times 1 over 5, right? 10 times 1 over 5, which, of course, ends up becoming x equals uh, 10 over 5, which is equal to 2. Right, so we, we were able to isolate x with just using the inverse. And the dope thing about that is that we can take the inverse of a matrix. And what does that mean? Well, it means, algebraically speaking, we can say, and oops, I did not want to do that. It means, algebraically speaking, if we take the inverse of this, and I'm not going to, as I said, we, I've just got a computer to calculate this one for me. If we take the inverse, so the inverse of this guy over here, uh, just happens to be, and as I said, I already got the computer to calculate it for me, is 1 negative 1 and 1 2 sorry negative 2 2 and negative 1 and 1 0 and 0 like that and if we multiply that by this side right because if we multiply if we think about it if we multiply both sides by the inverse that's just going to cancel this guy out and then we're left with the inverse times this set over here and abc on the other side well that means that if we multiply that, the inverse, by uh, 0, 0, negative 5, right, we're going to be left with A, B, and C. And that's awesome. And if you don't believe me, let's, let's actually multiply it out, right? So we know this is equal to, well, it's 1 times 0, so that's 0, plus negative 1 times 0, once again, that's 0. And then 1 times negative 5, so we're left with our first column, negative 5, which should be A, and... That checks out so far, if you remember what we had previously. Negative 2 times 0, okay, plus, that's 0, plus 2 times 0, that's 0. Negative 1 times 5, that's plus 5, zero, 2 zeros plus 5. Okay, that once again checks out with the v value we calculated earlier. And we have 1 times 0, that's 0. 0 times 0, that's 0, times 0, times negative 5, that's 0. Add those all together, that's sure enough, that's 0. And, it, and that's A, B, and C. A, B... And see so it's awesome because we can actually make the computer calculate this calculate any parabol uh, parabolic you know equation we want and that's awesome uh, we can do it beyond um, parabolic equations but I'm trying to keep it simple as, as I can because parabolas are pretty straightforward but theoretically we could do it with cubic or you know something else beyond that um, so yeah, I will be providing, sorry, the module in the description. We're going to hop into Desmos really quick to actually just test this out with some code just to see the different values that we get. And then, of course, we're going to actually be applying it into game. So I will see you guys there. Okay, so we're now in studio here. And I've just got a simple function that's going to solve our whatever values we give it. So it's going to give us some start uh, position, more or less. So that's a Y value um, that we want to it to be equal to right these are are more or less what the equation should be equal to so at t equals zero what should f of of t be equal to at uh f equals well whatever i mean these are dependent on the t start and the t finish i've made this function very flexible as we'll see and we can set the slope and what have you so sorry to start off let's just plug in the values that we talked about before and we'll show this on desmos and we'll see that everything uh, comes together. Sorry, oops. What have I messed up here? A, B, and C. Oops, I forgot a comma there. My mistake. So we get negative 5x squared plus 5 equals 0. So that's what we actually calculated, so we know that's working. Now let's see, so it starts at 0, it ends at 1, and it, I mean, it's hard to tell, but let's, I mean, let's take, if you remember, let's take the derivative as I showed you uh, we can say it's 2 times negative 5, um, 2 times negative, or we can actually calculate this, it's just going to tell us what the value is, 2 times negative 5, uh, 2 times negative 5 times x, or we don't need the x, sorry, we have the, the x, 2 times negative 5 and the x, because we're looking specifically at 1 plus b, which is 5, and that gives us negative 5, right, so we plugged it in, and we get negative 5 at that point, so that checks out, we can see it's 0, it's 0, so everything fits in terms of this equation. Let's see what happens when we up the slope, because it should hopefully still, of course, be in these two 
uh, hit these two points, but it should be much higher. Or let's try it when it's much lower. Let's try moving some stuff around. Let's just see what happens uh, because I just want to show you how well this works. So let's try like negative one. Uh, we have to be somewhat careful in terms of how we set this. We can't set like a slope of zero, for example, because the only point that a slope of zero would be would be up here, and that's technically flat. Um, oops. I didn't print this, my mistake. Let's see how that looks. And sure enough, that's much lower slope. Um, if we were to plug this in, that becomes a negative one, plus one, negative one. Sure enough. Um, so as you'll see, these, you know, this is a relatively simple equation. Let's try moving around the uh, T points this time, just to see what we get. So let's say we're starting our well, they're going to always start and hit. It's it's. We always want the y values to start and end at zero, so we're not going to change that. Uh, but what we will change is the t start. So let's say we start at five seconds and we end at fifteen seconds. Uh, let's see what we get there. So we get this guy. So that that gave us a little bit of a weird value, right? So I don't know if Desmos is going to handle that well, but we'll go ahead and see that. Uh, oh, there we go. It did handle it. So as we can see, we start at 5, we end at 15. Uh, does that check out with what I wrote? Start at 5, end at 15. The slope looks to be about right in terms of negative 1 again. So as you can see, we've got, you know, these pretty awesome things. Let's up the slope. Let's make it like negative 1,000. Uh, that might be too much for it to some degree. Because, I mean, these curves have to be possible, so I don't know. If that's going to work for us, it looks like the, the it calculated it though. So, <laughs> so that's pretty nut, nuts because it's like practically straight, just to fit in there. But uh, you get the idea. It does work. It will calculate those, and sure enough, 15 and 5. So we've got a great way to calculate pretty much any para parabola, and we can use it in whatever uh, which way that you want to. Okay, guys. So once again, in studio here. We're now doing a cool, simple uh, script, which is going to kind of like fire apart in this arc-like format. Uh, so we have the same solve function here. You should be familiar with that from when we're doing the Desmos stuff. Uh, but the fire function. So we create a part. Uh, we're going to get the for the direction between the character's mouse and their humanoid root part. And we only want the X and Y components of it because we're treating that like the X axis. Then we're treating the upward surface direction as the Y axis. Uh, we're then treating... Uh, we need like a starting point so we just take like a little bit forward from the character uh, we're then getting TV so TV is just like the total distance of the x-axis so we're dotting projecting straight onto the x-axis and getting the vector across from that uh, thin we're getting the height um, along the y-axis so our end goal height our f of uh, x or f of t so when the f of final time um, we're just assuming that we start at zero time, right? So then we calculate our A, B, and C with these values. I just picked a random slope of negative 50, but you could change this if you want to. Um, and once, actually, I should change this to T time, sorry, because T time is the value that I said up here is the time. Uh, we create a little curve function for it, so that just provides any point, given you give it T. Uh, then we just uh, quickly do a quick interpolation showing the part doing that. Now, of course, you could add like your actual physics to it, but this is just me being lazy here. So uh, then we fire it when things are being uh, done. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I'm just sitting here and let's uh, let's watch where this actually hits in my mouse. Sure enough, spot on. Aim and fire, bang up job. All the way out here. Oops, I kind of moved my mouse, sorry. All the way out there, awesome. Perfect, right? And we can change the time. We can make this even faster. We can make this 0 0.2. We can make the, this more intense. We can say this is 100. Let's Actually, let's even do more. Let's do 200. If we had a positive slope, it would go like under and up, right? Look how fast that is. But it's still perfectly precise. And uh, I will, of course, as always, um, actually, this time I might put this in a paste bin. I don't know. Well, you'll see in the description. Anyway, there will be code in the description um, we'll see where it actually ends up, what site it en ends up on, but, uh, hope you guys learned something new today. Thank you for watching and, uh, enjoy using matrixes, uh, for cool stuff like this. Bye.